seem like it. Mm-hmm. It was a whole life was flashing in front of me. I mean, it was just yeah. so weird. I mean, I could see myself just floating in, in air. And then I started seeing all the good things I've done in my life, believe it or not, and a lot of the bad things, which I, when I was young, I probably did. And I, I some of this stuff was flashing on me, uh, you know, to, you know, uh, to like actually pretty much came back to. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that moment of um, almost like a disassociation, I saw not just the inside of the plane, which was just glowing with kind of like golden radiant light, but also I also saw like the plane in the air like being held up or, um, you know, by some kind of invisible forces. It was like being in many places at once observing a lot of different things all at the same time. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't die. That's not why that happened. It's just like, I just separated perhaps for a moment and, um, saw everything all at once. Well, that's like yeah. with me. I, I'm talking to you now. I didn't die. I, I mean, you mm-hmm. know, I ended up in the <laughs> hospital with a real bad back after that. I, I mean, yeah. you know, actually, I have, even after the, the police got me out of the vehicle, they told me, you know, lay down when I stood up. I actually felt good for about three or four minutes after I was out of the vehicle. Right. And then all of a sudden, everything hit me bad. But I mean, from the standpoint, I mean, when something happens like that, your whole, like I said, your whole life flashes in front of you. I mean, you know, uh-huh. they, they told me I was lucky that, you know, I survived. Yeah. I mean, even when the insurance company, you know, uh, came out to look at the vehicle, you know, in the body shop, the very first thing uh-huh. he goes, you survived that? I mean, the whole yeah. the, the whole engine was shoved back like about four feet. I mean, the seat was ripped out, you know, it was just, but like I said, it was like slow motion. I, and I, I never had anything uh-huh. like that ever happen. Where I mean, where you've seen your whole life flash, uh, so yeah, and and definitely you probably had that sense of well, if I survived that, it definitely wasn't my time. You know, I I'm I'm here to do some more some more work. <laughs> I'm here to participate more in the experience because uh, you know this this sense of how you were spared or how you're you were uh, lucky or how you know it's. There's more for you to do. Well, that's, you know, what pretty much that and a couple other things later on in my life is what got me really into paranormal. When I first went into radio uh, in the uh, mid 70s, uh, you know, I started out as a DJ and then I started doing talk shows. But the, you know, the one station I started in doing a talk show, they said, hey, pick a subject if you want to do current events, whatever. And I said, no, I want to do uh, paranormal. And they go, what's paranormal? Well, in the area, uh, I, I know where you know, uh, it was around Battleground, Washington. And I'm mm-hmm, sure mm-hmm. you're familiar with that area. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay. And at that time frame, there was a lot of people being uh, kidnapped because there were some occults around there that were sacrificing animals. And actually, they were actually taking people and, you know, sacrificing a few people. And it took them years to catch them. But the whole show, all of a sudden, you know, we didn't talk about UFOs at that time frame. It was witchcraft and, you know, sorcerers and, and all that type mm-hmm. of stuff. And, you know, and that was, you know, I, and here I am today. I mean, I retired for quite a few years out of radio, got back into it. And, you know, here I am doing paranormal. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting, the whole timing of, of, so like when I had this, um, this near death experience and then the psychic, uh, stuff started to happen for me, like I didn't have the way I was raised or, um, you know, the background I had, like I hadn't even heard of paranormal, even though it had had this many decades, you know, or even longer than that tradition. And so for me, it was a whole lot of the whole journey was, um, what's happening? Because I didn't even have any frame of reference. I think I had maybe, uh, you know, like like being Catholic was was my closest <laughs> closest bridge to that whole world, and so it was really there was a lot of learning that had to happen and a lot of learning about, you know, how different things work. Was it hard for you to handle when you started getting these gifts and and things started happening? I mean, I, I, was, 
I've had other yeah. you know mystics on and psychics on and uh, you know remote readers on, and they told me the stuff just kind of you know came on. You know, one person told me it took a couple months. One person told me it was almost instantly. But they all told me the same thing. It just kind of came on a little bit gradually at the start. Yeah, it was um, it was super hard personally. And I think, you know, I, I um, ended up getting divorced. There wasn't any room for any of this in my previous marriage at, at all. It just it wasn't it, it, it wasn't a fit. And so that was one pretty big thing. And then in terms of the abilities themselves at first I was pretty excited like I would go to (laughs) I would go to psychic fairs and and be like the volunteer psychic at the beginning and I was so excited that you know I could I could do it and then um, and that was more of a lighthearted oh this is so interesting and I'm learning a lot and then when the channeling started you know it's almost like the abilities deepened and when the channeling started I knew I would have to kind of make a decision if I was going to continue on on this path or not because the channeling was pretty deep stuff and it was going to take a, a commitment. And that's primarily, I mean, I'm um, I'm clairvoyant and um, I'm a channel are my main, so um, psychic vision and psychic hearing and writing are mostly the things I do. But I teach intuition uh, all the time to other people, and we cover a lot of grounds in terms of the whole um, the whole essentials of what somebody would need to know if they were going to do that work. But yeah, I think yeah, I think it was it was really uh, disconcerting, and then it was kind of fun, and then it was like, oh, this is <laughs> this is a real thing. I gotta this is this is these are like beings, you know, uh, coming through, and I I gotta decide if I'm going to work with them or not. Yeah, sometimes when, you know, I've heard this from, you know, other guests that their spouse, when it happens, uh, either their their spouse, you know, goes along with it, you know, and is happy, you know, that it's going on, or the, the spouse will kind of like distance themselves really fast away from their spouse. I don't know if that happened to you or what. I mean, you know, it's, and then I have a second question for you. There's people out here who probably don't even know what channeling is. So can you explain that to our, our listeners out oh, here? Yeah. Yes, sure. So channeling, um, I think I would consider it in the paranormal realm, in a, in a, like the sister of, of um, let, let me just backtrack. So channeling is when you connect to other entities or other beings, and then some people channel through the voice. Esther Hicks is a really famous one, or um, Seth. Seth is another one, or Ramtha, who I think was in Seattle area. Um, so they they let go of themselves. Another entity arrives in, and then they speak in that entity's voice and with that entity's mannerisms. Uh, Lee Carroll, Cryon is pretty well known nowadays. And so what's interesting about the channeling through voice is that a whole different personality and a whole different information stream, you know, that the person couldn't possibly know comes through. So for me, I don't channel through voice. I do uh, channeling in writing. I just, I, I don't know why that is. It's just, that's how it comes through for me. And um, what I get is spiritual teaching. So um, people might have reference like A Course in Miracles. Uh, that is a, a large channeled work that's pretty famous. I think that was channeled in the, I think it was in the 70s. Um, that's the biggest one that comes to mind at this point. But um, so what I get is spiritual teachings. I get a an entire spiritual thought system about the soul and uh, interconnection and why we're here. And um, it's not information that I had access or understanding of before I began to receive it. So that's what's interesting. It's like, wow, look at this. And I don't even know (laughs) at the beginning, I don't even know what this means. And now, okay, I know what this means. Wow. This is interesting. Now, Sarah, I mean, when you you were writing this stuff down, did you even know what you're writing or just, you, after you got done or after uh, you'd go back and read it and you'd go, oh, my God, what, what, what is this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
So this particular book, it was the classic little tap on the shoulder from the the beings. And I don't, you know, they're not individual. At the very beginning, when I first started this process, they were, there were some pretty, um, there was two almost like Mennonite style. I don't want to use, could not, not only Mennonite, but just a very plain, um, a plain dressed two ladies uh, that came and very, um, carefully gave me the information, and then um, another time later, um, an angelic, an angelic being came, and then for this time, there's more like there's these just uh, beings of light, and there's multiple of them. Sometimes there's four, sometimes there's eight. They're almost like a collective. I don't consider them aliens. I consider them from a different dimensionality. Um, and so let's see, let me just, like sometimes I, I lose my train of thought. I need to, oh, I remember. Um, yeah, they came at like three and four in the morning and uh, a while back. And every night I was woken up and every night it was like, You're, you, we need you to do some writing. And I would just go sit on the sofa in the living room and have my little blanket on and just have my laptop and I would just sit there and half the time I think I honestly think I was sleeping and then I would just <laughs> no I really I really do and then I would just do that for like an hour or two hours and crawl back into bed for the last little bit of sleep and I don't even because I'd done it a few other chunks of time you know I'd done this process a couple other times um I didn't even bother looking. I was like, okay, obviously something's happening. And then when I did look, it was just this whole, uh, 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 you know, just this whole piece of of uh, writing that just came out all whole. Like it didn't, it didn't need to get edited or it didn't get need to get rearranged. It was just lesson one. Lesson sixty six, <laughs> well, <laughs> and the whole thing in the middle. So, what's well, there? Interesting. What what type of uh, dictation basically were you taking? I mean, what were the lessons? What were they, uh, you know, telling you? Yeah, yeah. Well, the lessons are all about ways to think of, and I know that this is uh, more of a paranormal focus, not so much spiritual. But the lessons are all about um, why we're here, how to think about ourselves as infinite beings um, instead of finite beings and how we can connect with everything, nature, energy, um, guides, events, kind of just like throwing away all the ideas of matter or time being real and just learning how to connect um, in a really expanded way to everything all at once. Um, it's just sort of a different way of looking at why we're here. Okay. Have they told you what could happen to us if, you know, if we don't uh, basically, you know, shape up and, and all that stuff as a society? Yeah. You know, they're not, um, they are not, I have never heard that kind of um, idea. They're, they're not at all. I mean, I'm, I'm like, we have to shape up as a society, but in terms of these guides, they're just encouraging, like, um, humanity's evolving. You're here to get expanded. Um, there's not a lot of, of fear for the collective in this particular book. Although I certainly understand that point of view. Okay, now have you only written one book at this point, or have you written several? Oh, I've written, yeah, this is my um, seventh book, and this is the third channel book. Um, so this is kind of like the most complete. Uh, it's uh, like the first one and the second one, and then this is the, the, the meat of the teachings, I would say. And then the other books were more like, um, I wrote Your Psychic Child, How to Work with Psychic Kids, or... Um, the intuitive path, how to open your intuition. It was more how-to books on intuitive, how to become a psychic. Interesting. You know, that's one thing I do feel kids, you know, young kids, I would say between three and seven are more psychic 
uh, you know, than probably any age. 